Subcutaneous injections in cattle are usually given in the loose folds of skin, either in front of the shoulder or behind the shoulder. When giving a subcutaneous injection, what one does is pick up a loose fold of skin at the site, make a tent, and then introduce the needle and syringe through the skin parallel to the body wall. This avoids injecting the underlying muscle and inject the substance. It's important to make sure that the needle hasn't gone through the other side of the tent and so the injection squirts over the skin. In areas where TB is a big problem, we would usually recommend you do the skin injection, the subcutaneous injection behind the shoulder, because if you do the injection in front of the shoulder, in the skin of the neck, and a reaction occurs, then this can make the interpretation of the TB test quite difficult. Some wormer products are given into the loose skin at the base of the ear and when administering these injections it's important that you read the manufacturer's instructions or seek professional advice if you're unsure as to what to do. The first part of the procedure is to make sure that the animal is adequately restrained and the head is held firmly. The ear is grasped and the injection site is located. The injection site is about three and a half centimetres or about an inch and a half out from the ear cartilage which is about here. So once you've uh, determined where your injection site is going to be, the ear is grasped. You look for a clean uncontaminated uh, area of skin and to uh, insert the needle. So the ins needle is inserted under the skin and then advanced up to the hub, taking care to avoid any blood vessels or nerves in the area if you can. Once the needle is inserted up to the hub, again aspirate the plunger to make sure that you aren't in a blood vessel and inject the solution. Once the solution has been injected, the needle and syringe can be removed. As you do this, apply pressure to the injection site to ensure there's no leakage of product. site that you need to deposit the uh, product uh, is shown quite nicely on this model. There you can see where the product should be deposited in relation to the base of the ear. Interruminal boluses are a means of administering wormers to animals through uh, bolus tablets. It's important if you're going to use these that you use a gun that is compatible with the bolus that you've purchased. These uh, guns deposit the bolus at the back of the animal's mouth and the animal then swallows them. The bolus then lands in the animal's rumen and releases wormer over a period of time. We're now going to demonstrate the administration of a bolus. So the first thing to do is to get your gun and load it with the bolus that you're going to use. The animal should be adequately restrained so that the bolus can be administered safely. The first thing to do is to introduce the bolus gun into the, into the front of the animal's mouth, push it gently but firmly down over the back of the tongue to the back of the mouth, lifting the head as you do so, 
and once you feel that the bolus gun is in the correct position the bolus can be injected by squeezing the release trigger the bolus will then be swallowed by the animal and the gun can be removed it's important when giving a bolus that you don't use excessive force because you can damage the animal's throat it's also important that the head and neck are held in a reasonably straight position and that the animal can swallow so that the bolus can get from the back of the mouth to the rumen if the animal is fighting you or the neck is twisted then it's very difficult to administer the wormer bolus properly and safely. Pour on pod products are simple to use and can be effective as long as they are used correctly according to the manufacturer's instructions. It's important when using pour on products that the dosing equipment that you use is compatible with the product that you're going to uh, uh, use and that the guns are calibrated correctly. After you've finished using the dosing guns, it's important that they are cleaned properly. There are usually uh, uh, manufacturer's instructions that accompany the guns, that they're rinsed, that they're cleaned out and then stored correctly. It's important when using pour-ons or spot-ons that dosing is accurate and you dose according to the manufacturer's instructions. And when treating an animal, what we usually do with a pour-on is apply the product along the midline of the back from the withers or shoulders right to the tail head like so when dosing animals it's important not to do it if they're wet or if rain is forecast in the next few hours unless it says in the instructions that the products are rainproof when using them, be careful to avoid applying it to damaged skin or to areas of skin that are heavily contaminated with mud or manure. And with some products, it's important that they are not applied to recently clipped animals because this can lead to toxicity issues. Oral drenching is designed to deliver the wormer dose over the tongue to the back of the mouth the dose should be swallowed all at once to optimize efficacy when dosing an animal with an oral wormer as always it's important to have the animal adequately restrained with the head held up once the animal is restrained you can introduce the worming gun into the side of the mouth over the back of the tongue and depress the plunger so that the wormer is delivered as a single dose and will be swallowed it's important that the dosing gun is well maintained and calibrated properly so that an accurate dose of wormer is administered faulty equipment or trying to dose the animal too quickly can result in air bubbles collecting in the barrel of the, the gun so causing the animal to receive an inaccurate dose.